So, uh, so Gary, how is it we got ourselves into this fine mess with a 34-foot sailboat um, that's a fixer-upper and the idea of actually taking this from Florida, this boat, all the way back to New England? How do we get ourselves into this mess? Well, the very beginning goes back to childhood. Um, um, I grew up messing around in boats. Uh, little day sailors, canoes, rowboats. Yeah, same. Um, rafts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did too. I grew up uh, as much as I grew up uh, sailing in Boston. Uh, they had a wonderful program where you could learn sailing for a dollar. The whole summer you could sail for a dollar if you were under 18 on the Charles River in Boston. And uh, so I got my, my start there. I um, learned things mostly from, a lot from my father, but also Boy Scouts. I got um, every aquatic merit badge I could get. Yeah. Um, and of course, and then lots of other skills along mm. the way have been very helpful. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You have to know where you are and where you're going. So navigation is immensely important. Mm -hmm. And um, again, with Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. I learned map and compass, and yeah. then I taught. Mm -hmm. Sure, it, it, it all leads in. Uh, for instance, with uh, the sailing program in Boston, uh, they offered ratings on all sorts of different boats that they had. Their whole plethora of boats, they from small to larger, and uh, so I, I, I partook for spinnakers, and, spinnakers heavy and heavy weather and advanced helmsmen, and, and eventually got into uh, doing it, uh, work as an instructor. Yeah, 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 as an instructor. So. It really got all that going, and then as well too. I had a love for maps as a as a child, and so um, you know I, I had a compass, and I learned how to how to plot courses, and so that just transferred very easily from whatever I learned, you know, outside of sailing into sailing. So, so. It's not just sails and a rudder that makes the boat go. There's an engine. Uh, there's all sorts of there's plumbing and electrical and mm -hmm. cabinetry and yeah and cooking. Mm -hmm. I mean, we both have a, a love of cooking, and that just comes from That's, yeah. life and from camping. Growing up, we just grew up with you know our, in a family where you know moms cooked and you know we, yeah. we partook of that and, and my dad cooked too. Yeah, so. yeah, and my dad as well in later years. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, sailing really is not just about sailing. Sailing embodies within it so many different skills. That you have to bring together mm. uh, in a polymathic way. Polymathic is having an interest, in, a little bit of an interest in just about everything, um, which you really need. Otherwise, either that or you need to have an endless supply of money yeah, to pay someone pay else. Pay other people to. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of your plumbing and electrical. Right. Although we do pay somebody else to take care of our engine. That's one mm -hmm. skill that both of us lack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're learning this particular engine, mm -hmm. and some of that knowledge will could uh, mm -hmm. be useful for other engines. Absolutely. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, we yeah. Hang out. yeah. Well, yeah. And, so and if you didn't know how to cook, you. would Pay uh, stofers to cook for you. That's right, and we didn't know how to do, you know, repair our engine. We brought, we brought uh, Diesel Tom, as we call him, in, and uh, he's been he's been showing us what he's been doing as he's been doing it. So we kind of it's a little less daunting now. Yeah. So so along with the repair, we're mm -hmm. getting some uh, tuition. Yeah, it's a, it's free education. So. I mean, if you're going to pay to have an engine repaired, you may as well use it as an educational class and, and learn what you can. So, yeah, those pieces as well. Um, what? You want to go into the electrical? You want to go into all that here? Well, sure. Um, the electrical system on a boat, especially a modern boat, mm. uh, when I was a kid sailing, some of the boats a lot of even small boats don't have any electrical system. Remember so what your dad used to say? You know, all he you always says, candle. "All you need is a candle." Yeah, and his navigation lights for oil lamps. Uh, he but shakes now, his head when he sees any <laughs> any any of the work that we do. So um, we have um, power sorry. coming in from the engine, from solar two hundred watts of solar panels. Yeah. We can have power coming in from shore power from the solar panel cord. right back here. Um, and that all has to be juggled. Mm -hmm. Of power coming in. 
Then you have the power storage. Mm -hmm. Two and batteries. We have on this boat. We have two batteries. Yeah. You know, and I and I, they have to be balanced. They do. They do. And then you have power going out, and you have to look at balance how much power is coming in, how much power is going out. Mm -hmm. So there's some math in there. Mm -hmm. You have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't come into this knowing all of this, but you know, for instance, my my electrical background didn't come from school. It, it no. actually came from uh, a garbage can. I, I was a little kid, and I was out, you know. The electric garbage can. Well, no, well, yeah. <laughs> I guess you know, it felt like that. I mean, it felt like when I looked through, there I was out one night, and someone was throwing away a little electrical, you know, you do it kit, and uh, came with an instruction manual. You can make transistor radios, and like, wow, this is cool. And and so I started to dabble, and the more I dabbled, the the more I, interest I had, and. Eventually, you know, you do enough reading and you can figure it all out. It's not that tough. Yeah. Well, taking apart radios. And ah, yes. Uh, yeah, I had. A, I was known for that in school. Um, you know, teachers would give me their uh, their radio to take home and try to fix. I remember my dad was very angry at me when I was seven years old. He had come home and found that the back of the TV had been taken off, and I had taken out all the tubes. That's how old I am. He's like, put that back, and I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you know how to put that back? I'm like, yeah, I do. So, you and know, you did. I did. So, it was either that or I'd get a serious scolding. So, uh, um, plumbing is another system. Mm. Uh, yeah, again, a kid just goes over the side, but now there's regulations about mm. um, what and where and mm -hmm. when you can uh, oh, dump things right. over the side. That's right. Uh, that's right. For uh, both human waste and kitchen waste, um, mm -hmm. village waste, uh, so we're... Yeah, they have a plaque. Oh, yes. This plaque, which is firmly affixed to a visible surface, tells us where we can dump and right. what it's legal to dump and what it's not, when it's not legal to dump and what you can and what you can't dump. If you have that affixed right on this imaginary wall, <laughs> it needs to be, it needs yes. to uh, get rid of that. Okay, Somewhere. It's over there. Up yeah. here, I don't know. Okay, but we know. But it. we do need to. Yes. Uh, there's lots of little regulations like that. You have to have that placard. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to. Our marine head, traditional marine head, has two ways that it can be dumped. One is over uh, into the water. That's the bathroom. If you're not, you know, for those yes. not not the head, clad. the head. The head is. Yes, the we'll talk. But why is it called the head again? Ah yes. Ah yes. There's a story here. So yeah. back in the days, old days of sailing ships, um, if you needed to relieve yourself, you went out. There was some netting out by the bowsprit mm -hmm. at the head of the boat. Uh huh. And you would climb out onto the netting and do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah, and and then um, the smell, of course, because you're a sailing ship. The wind is blowing you from behind. No. So yeah. Well, no. right. Well, basically, from the uh, from the side mm -hmm. or wherever. But it's generally going to be heading forward. Yeah. And so if you're up at the front, everything starts. The smell just well, goes forward. It just falls into the ocean. Yeah. Yes. That's why it's the head. So. Um, when you have there's a, a, a valve mm. to switch between whether you're, you're dumping overboard or uh, dumping into a, uh, a holding tank. A hold, well, a holding tank and then onto a, uh, a sewage system mm. at a marina. Uh huh. And it's called the Y valve, and you have to show that Why? it's locked. Why? Because it's a three-way valve. Oh, okay. Uh, so if the Coast Guard or the uh, powers that be board and inspect, they want to see a padlock. Oh, we can oh, we can just show them this. We have this. <laughs> so, but no, you have to have a padlock on your on your Y valve to so show that you've taken steps to, to make sure that it doesn't accidentally go overboard. Yeah. Uh, so plumbing, mm. electrical. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's see. Oh, well, we got navigation. We, we we've covered that. Yeah. Well, there's more so, to yeah. boat navigation than just maps and compasses mm -hmm. because. Uh, in, on modern boats, we have something called a chart plotter, mm -hmm. which is GPS based, and uh, mm -hmm. it is it right here. It is. Yeah. yeah. Keep talking. I'll grab the chart plotter. Uh, so, with the chart plotter, you can kind of like your GPS in your car. You can select locations where you're headed to. Run back. I think so. And um, it will give you a direction. It can. Calculate uh, the tides uh, as the current is carrying you to the side and the wind mm -hmm. is carrying you to the other side. It will 
So you. Um, I mean, it's pretty similar. It's pretty similar to. I mean, as an analogy to to the GPS in your car, except you can program this it, just like you can Google Maps to to tell you which turns to take and where to go. You can do the same thing on here in a nautical realm. So this is an invaluable device. But you know, we grew we grew up in an era before chart plotters. Um, Compass. Yeah, I think I went to school with Benjamin Franklin. But uh, in reality, yeah, it was map and compass back then. You had to learn all that. And it's good to know just in Absolutely. case, you know, you lose power and you don't have access to technology. So, yeah. But how did we end up with this particular boat? This beautiful 1979 Citation 34. Erwin Citation. 41 years old. Um, and and what were the boats that came before? Ah uh, yes, yeah. We didn't just end up with this boat. As, this isn't our first boat. We 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 started out with all sorts of boats, as we talked yeah. about a little earlier. So my my father had canoes, rowboats, mm -hmm. little sailing dinghy. Um, Boy Scout camp. We had mm -hmm. canoes and rowboats and mm -hmm. uh, sunfish. Yeah. Um, which, if you don't know, is a little one or two person oh, day sailor day sailor just for going out and having fun mm -hmm. and falling off and going yeah. swimming it's a good way to go swimming mm -hmm. and of course you? well I, I my dad had a canoe we used to go canoeing i did join the community boating in boston for a dollar sailed every summer for a dollar spent just innumerable hours there um and uh ended up purchasing a small day sailor myself when i was in in, in work uh, during my working years, and so I used to take that out on the lakes and, and get wet occasionally, but learned, learned a lot in the process. I had a neighbor when I was a teenager who owned a uh, Beetle Cat sailboat, fiberglass, actually, actually it was a Beetle Swan, mm. it looked just like a Beetle Cat, and um, that boat got sailed more than any other boat in the harbor, because mm. he was retired and he would just go out anytime he don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, when he died, I bought his boat from his widow and um, cleaned it and uh, paint, repainted it and uh, sailed it for a couple of years anyway. Mm -hmm. And then I went up, off to college and mm -hmm. stuff. Sold that boat. Mm -hmm. um, canoes. Just before we met, I ended up with a Hobie Cat. 16 foot Hobie Cat, mm -hmm. and we sailed that together mm -hmm. on several occasions. And um, I think that whetted we our got, appetite. We got to learn that we both like mm -hmm. sailing. Yeah. Not sure who's going to be in charge, but yeah, that's work yeah. that out later. But we, we from that experience together, yeah. we learned that. But we, we also knew that the Hobie Cat uh, wasn't quite the right boat for it's us. It's a little small, specific to day sailing. Yeah. And we really couldn't take it out on any longer trips, and we had thoughts of going places. So we mm -hmm. bought a 1993, 1993 McGregor, McGregor 26S. Uh -huh. Now the S, as we know, the McGregor 26 is the S version is a real sailboat mm -hmm. with a, a swing keel, mm -hmm. that's the S, yeah. and a 10 horse motor, mm -hmm. 9.9. .9. Yeah. Um, and that boat has just been amazing because uh, because it has a swing keel and because it has a, a water ballast. You have a valve on it. You can let a thousand pounds of water in uh, and drain it when you trailer it. Gives it that ballast it needs so it doesn't tip it in the wind. It also allows it to go onto the trailer and be towed with a regular car. Yeah. So we can launch it, uh, store it in my uh, side yard. Yeah. No docking fees. No docking fees. Docking fees get expensive. Yes, they do. Marinas and docks. So this oh, was a this yeah. was an advantage. Um, mm -hmm. And we did a lot of modifications on that boat, mm -hmm. on the especially on the interior to make it more more than just a weekender, mm -hmm. but a real cruising boat yeah. where you can stay aboard for well three and a half months. Well, I remember when we first got the boat. The first, pretty much the first thing you did was took you took a sawzall and took the entire inside of the boat oh, out. Story and threw it out. We'll have to tell you that on another story. But the, the point of it is, we, we, re, we learned skills in the process, yeah. modifying it for our needs. Uh, mm -hmm. We improved our navigation skills, mm -hmm. and sailing skills, mm -hmm. and bigger boat handling skills. Absolutely. And, and so with that in hand, 
we had been talking about taking that Mercury here and saying, well, we'd like to actually sail down the Intracoastal Waterway, which is the inland waterway from New England all the way down to Florida. We didn't really want to go round trip. And we're like, how are we going to do this? If we bring the trailer down, how are we going to get the vehicle back to Boston and sail? Um, so we were down here in Florida and we were kind of looking for a bigger boat. Mm -hmm. well, not for us, but just to have experience on somebody else's mm -hmm. bigger boat. Mm -hmm. So we came down here to meet with um, a gentleman by the name of Rock mm -hmm. and his 42 foot Pearson, mm -hmm. which is a catch. Mm -hmm. And we're all set, gonna go sailing. He needed a crew he needed to yeah. handle mm -hmm. this yeah. much bigger boat, 42 feet. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but he had trouble. The en his engine is dead. Yeah. And he's actually now looking at getting, having the old engine taken completely out, a whole new mm -hmm. engine. Mm hmm. It'll be very expensive, but. Mm -hmm. So in the process, while we were sitting around waiting, hoping that uh, his engine would be fixed, we took his dinghy out one day and just, his, the engine on the dinghy wasn't working so we had to row that. And we rowed it uh, uh, quite a ways up to a dock where there was an older couple that we ran into. And they told us a story after we told them a little bit about our story that we were sailing. looking for another, another our sailing story, that we were looking for a larger boat one day and they said, we have an opportunity for you. We have a friend who has a friend, who has a neighbor, who has a... A free boat. Free boat. So we're kind of piques our interest. Yeah. Said, okay, let's okay, uh, a little more details. Mm -hmm. It's a 30 foot, four foot. He wasn't sure what kind it was. Mm -hmm. So uh, he gave us a phone number. Contact. <coughs> Turned out to be a quarter of a mile away. Absolutely. Uh, you can actually look through our videos. We have a video of when we actually saw the boat for the first time. And so we went over and uh, mm -hmm. and several visits, mm -hmm. making sure that we really did yeah. want this because we knew, we could see that it was in bad shape. Mm -hmm. It did a lot of damage. Right. And we decided, yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. And we'll fix it up and that'll be the boat that we take up to New England. So the idea is we're fixing this boat up, we're going to sail it up to New England. And we're learning about a bigger boat. Yeah. Not as big as a 42. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the boat that we're ultimately going to... No, no. No, this we'll is not the right boat. No, no. So we've learned a little bit about what we like, what we don't like, and we know that we will sell this boat, and uh, we'll use the money from the sale to work our way up to a boat that we're, is more in line what with what we're doing. For. Yeah, what we're looking for. Our so. style of cruising. Everybody yeah. has their own style. Absolutely. Some people want to go out just fishing, mm -hmm. other people say day sailing. Yeah. We want to be able to go out for mm -hmm. a month or more, two months. And be comfortable. A year at a time. Yeah. Have a galley where I can cook a nice We want to have guests come on board. Mm -hmm. not, I mean, we like each other, but mm -hmm. we need other people. Yeah, it's wonderful lives. to have interaction with other people and to and to share that with, with you, our viewers, and with the general, the greater world around us. So that's what we hope to do. So that's how we got here, and that's where we are right now. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see. The adventure continues to unfold, and um, indeed we will. Uh, I'm sure the stories will continue coming. So that's it from from the, from the here. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to you all soon.